Hello, I'm Pastor Brian, and I want to thank you so much for joining me as we look into God's Word to see His timeless truth. I think one of the problems we have today is that religious rituals and ceremonies get in the way. They're insidious, and they divert people from true saving faith. How many people do you know that they are good with rich religious rituals or traditions, but when it comes to having saving faith, trusting in Jesus Christ, there is that barrier because they believe that what they do is good enough to save them, or at least what they're doing is better than their neighbor, better than somebody else, and so therefore, they're okay. Now, that's extremely difficult to really get around. Obviously, it's God who works in and through the person's heart. And maybe you're one listening today, and you feel like because you go to church on Sunday, because you uh, uh, every once in a while have picked up your Bible, or your grandparents have um, been Christians, or, or whatever it may be, that that is what brings about salvation. Or... You say, well, you know, those that follow a different faith, they're really devout to their faith. So shouldn't their faith save them? They're really devout in their practices. Won't God honor that? Well, that's really what Paul has been addressing is that all are sinners. All are in need of a Savior. And the problem is that no one is righteous in what they do. No amount of works can ever save anybody. So we've got this horrible diagnosis that we are dead and we are separated from God. And that is really bad news. And for the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about that bad news. And because that's really at the heart of what Paul has been communicated ever since all the way back in chapter 1. And here we are in chapter 3, verse 21, where there is going to be a change. This bad news that we have gotten as though we are in a doctor's office and it says, you know what? Things look pretty grim. There, there is really no way to, to deal with this, with what you've been doing, with what you've seen. And so we are going to have this message of great news. In fact, this is one of those great passages in Scripture that's so important that people hear. But Obviously, it comes after the realization that we need a Savior. We need a way to deal with our sin because God is just in his judgment. And so, therefore, we have a problem and being religious cannot solve it. And being irreligious definitely can't solve it. For all of us are guilty and all of us deserve God's wrath. And that is really bad news. So, let's go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Just asking God to open our eyes as we dig in to Romans chapter 3, starting in verse 21. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the deep truths that are in it. Lord, I pray that you would work in my heart to get, allow me to say the right words. And those that are listening, give them ears to hear about your great truth. It's in your name we do pray. Amen. So hopefully you have your Bible, Bibles open to Romans chapter 3, verse 21. Now, I think a lot of times people are asking the wrong question. The question they ask is, how can God justly punish human beings? And that should not be the question that we have. The, 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 uh, the question that we should be asking is, how can God justly forgive anyone? Because God is holy and righteous, and he can't just overlook sin, just as a good judge can't look at a criminal and say, well, I know you've done lots of wrong, and I'm just going to let you go. No. 
we would say that judge is not just anymore. For we understand there is a penalty that needs to be paid for our rebellion against God. God can just not forgive it, but there has to be a price. It has to be dealt with. In a court of law, we see that the, the punishment should fit the crime. And the punishment of our rebellion against God is that we have are, are dead and that we are dead in our sins. We are separated from God. And that what we rightly deserve is for all eternity to be separated from him and to have his judgment, his wrath upon us. But God in his divine grace and his divine mercy has been able to show us in his love that he is able to deal with this horrible situation that everybody has found themselves in in with is the issue of sin. And so... Let's go ahead and dig into Romans. Before we get to Romans 3, remember, back in Romans 1.17, it said this, For in the righteousness of God is revealed from uh, faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. So, Paul took a break, went through, talked about the people that were Gentiles or non-Jews, talked about the Jews and how that they, he, all of us stand condemned. There is no one righteous, no, not one. And so in, in, in that, Paul is flipping over to a new page and showing us really what is required for us to be declared right, for us to be justified. And this is where we dig into Romans 3, chapter 3, verse 21. But now, this but now is that transition. He has finished talking only about the issue of sin, but he is transitioning into how we can be made righteous. And so, it says, but now the righteousness of God has been manifest apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. Let's go ahead and break down that. The righteousness of God, that God uh, being... uh, able to be set apart in that he is providing the way for salvation for humanity humanity the way in which they can he can bring about salvation in a creating a relationship through him and through his work and so it has been made manifest so it it has been uh, this idea of clearly observed. It has been revealed. Not that it was, he's coming up with a completely new thing. In fact, in chapter four and throughout this, we have seen that Paul is taking great effort and energy, especially to those that are Jews, to show them that this idea of sending his son, Jesus Christ, has been could be seen in the Old Testament that God had a plan for redemption, for salvation. And that has been made clear. And it says, so it's made apart from the law. So we see that it is not by the things that we do. It's not through uh, being obedient and, and seeing what was talked about in uh, in the Old Testament. So through the law and the prophets. So for the first five books of the Bible and then the prophets is the rest of it. All of that information, the Old Testament bears witness 
to God's plan and what he is planning on doing. And we have seen it through Jesus Christ. And Paul's just showing, showing us that this has been made clear what he was talking about in the Old Testament. And so not that it's new, but it's a, a being made manifest. It's being made real. And, and he's saying this. It says, verse 22, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction. The righteousness of God is saying that he... God is set apart. He is holy. He is righteous. And, and it's talking about his work. And this is all going to reflect upon how we could not do the work. We could never live up to what the law required. And even if we could, we would still stand condemned because sin entered into the world through one man, and that's Adam. And so get this clear that in the, and he'll and he'll kind of lay this out further, that in the the people in the Old Testament before the time of Christ, the only way that they are going to be able to enter into heaven is through the work of Jesus Christ, and we'll see that kind of laid out a little bit more. But understand. Everyone who ever enters into heaven, into that eternal state with God, has been able to get in that position because of God's righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ. And so this idea that it's, yes, it's in, it's in Jesus Christ that all who, all have to believe, that everyone has to believe. But it is also because of Jesus Christ and his faithful obedience to the Father. That which we could not do, where Jesus Christ fulfilled the law completely, he was completely obedient to Jesus Christ. And he, through that, we know that we have been saved. And so all the laws, the prophets have pointed to this. And now we see it in Jesus Christ. And no one is saved by works but it's all who believe, and this idea of the faith is the means in which salvation has occurred because of the work of Jesus Christ and nothing that we can do. One way to spot a false prophet or somebody that is not speaking things of scripture, if they add anything on to uh, salvation in addition to faith in Christ, then it, it is a different gospel. Now, understand, faith is our actions and, and works are a result of faith, but works do not create works do not save so uh, no amount of good deeds religious activities can ever uh, uh, warrant anybody being entered into the kingdom of god it is only by faith alone and it is no other mean, so no other religion, no other practice. It is only by faith in Jesus Christ alone. And that is central to the gospel. And I think that's why we see as, as just as sin entered into the world through uh, one man, Adam, through the second Adam, and that's Jesus Christ, that all are redeemed. And, and we'll get into some of this. And when it says, for there are no distinctions, it's saying it doesn't matter if you're Jew, Gentile, black, white. It doesn't matter how old, how young. It doesn't matter anything that, and this is it. All, it starts in verse 30, for all have sinned. And that's kind of, the, we have indwelling sin because of Adam and fall short of the glory of God. That our, our sins continue to condemn us. That we continue to rebel against God. And in that, we stand condemned. That, that we fall short 
of being perfect. And it's so important that we understand that, that the law was never meant to bring about salvation. It was pointing to salvation that would be had in Jesus Christ. But no one could be saved by good works. It's never been that way. It will never be that way. And the insidiousness of it, that people will encourage other people in the way of living righteousness, which that righteous is really filthy rags, cannot save anybody because it's all based upon human works. And God says right here, it's faith in, in what Jesus Christ has done. And I, and I, and I, this idea of this falling short is that we keep on falling short. So just as we have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ through faith, we continue to follow after Jesus Christ by faith, which also necessitates, since we did not bring, we did not work for our salvation, no works can separate us, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And again, this is later on in Romans. But we understand that it is by the work of Christ. And so all of us has failed to meet what the demand is upon us and are justified by his grace. So the great, his grace is unmerited favor. We didn't earn it. It is, it is what he has shown us as a gift. It was a gift to, to, to anyone who has trusted in him that we have to receive that gift. We have to believe. We have to have faith. It isn't about works. Just as gifts are, are not about earning them, Gift is that which we don't deserve, but are given that are gracious and good through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So this idea of redemption, this idea of a ransom for payment, that something, someone who is Jesus Christ paid the price in order to secure our release. So not only did Jesus Christ forgive us of our sins when we trust in him, but he puts upon his righteousness upon us for he paid the price and he has allowed us to receive salvation. Let, let, let me go ahead and it continues on to explain this. And this is just deep, rich theology. Read it and study it and go through this and try to make sense of all that's here. Verse 25. Whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by Faith. So let's go ahead and kind of unpack all of that. So we see that God put forward as a propitiation. And what we see, the idea of propitiation is that the, the sacrifice that provides atonement, the, the, that uh, purification uh, that is given through Christ's blood. And, and understand how much this ties into the Old Testament. Um, Hilasterion is the Greek, and, and it could be translated the mercy seat. Now, if we think of the Ark of the Covenant, uh, the Ark, uh, um, where we see, where the tablets were, and we understand that once a year there were two goats, and and one would go free, and the other one, his the blood of the goats, went every year by the high priest would go in and sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat, and so the idea that 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 was just pointing to that which could not completely be done because every year it had to be done again on the Day of Atonement, uh, Yom Kippur. And, and what we understand is that 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 did not satisfy completely. It never was meant to, but it was to point to the one that could do it, the one who could be the sacrifice that paid atonement, and that is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ did that through by, by his blood, which by him living the perfect life, dying on the cross, being the perfect sacrifice, Jesus was the only one that could satisfy what 
we could not do in and of ourselves. And so that it is to be received by faith, not through works, but through trust in him and his work. This was to show God's righteousness, to show that God was able to make us righteous because of what Jesus Christ did, that God is holy, he is set apart, and and in this, he provides a way of salvation. It continues on and it says, because of his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. And so when we think about the idea of forbearance, it, it is sh showing his great uh, grace. He has shown um, this idea of restraint and self-control. So what the people in the Old Testament deserved was God's wrath to be poured out upon them. And there was no way by just obeying the law that they could ever enter into heaven. But in God's restraint, he postponed that, that, that the idea of that he passed over their former sins. So that they are saved and are in heaven because of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So whether it's in the past or whether it's now or in the future, the only way to enter into heaven is by the faith in Christ and the work that he did on the cross. And so God, showing his justice, showing his, his restraint, self-control, he said, this is what's happening. I know that the law was pointing to it, although it had not fully been revealed. He knew that one day it would. And so through his forbearance, that is how the Jews of the past were able, and, and probably some Gentiles, were able to enter into salvation. It was, uh, it was to show his righteousness at the present time. So it shows the righteousness of God. It shows his mercy so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. So uh, faith in Jesus. So Jesus is the, is the one who did the work. He is, uh, might be just, so he is still uh, set apart. He is still holy, and he is the justifier. He is the one who made it right. So it is uh, not of our works that, that any of us have any merit to enter into heaven. God, God said it's by faith in Christ and Christ alone. Any other way is a distortion of the gospel, and we have to know that we have to hold that Next, Paul makes a transition. This transition that he makes is to show that we cannot boast. It's adding emphasis to the fact that it is by faith alone. And if it is by faith alone, nobody can boast. And so he's going to go ahead and go through kind of maybe the questions that they would have and just really show us that it really is by the work of Jesus Christ alone, by, by faith alone, and, we, and through scripture alone, and, and that we do not add anything to it. And because we don't add anything to it, we can't boast. We have no reason to boast in our salvation. And so he starts off this way, verse 27. Then what becomes of our boasting? Is it excluded? By what kind of law? Uh, by a work, a, a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. And so I think what he's saying is take away any law, take away any type of work, take away all of that because righteousness is found in Faith, and I think it uses this idea, this, this law of faith, which shows that it is um, that which is in Christ. It is in Christ alone that salvation can ever be had. For we, 
we hold that one is justified, so made right, that, and again, faith is that instrument of justification by faith apart from the works of the law. The Old Testament was never made to provide salvation. It was a tutor. It, it, it showed that we that they were sinners, that the Jews were sinners. All of creation declares, even to the Gentile, that there is a God and and, and that that one who created all things should be worshipped. We should not fall away from God and what he has done. And so it continues on. It says this. It says, Or is God the God of the Jews only? And obviously, you know, no, he's not only the Jews. He, he, he understand that he had a plan of salvation for all who were created in his image, all of humanity, all of mankind. And, and that salvation is for those who trust him. So it's not only of the Jews, but we understand that the Jews can take part in it through faith. And we'll understand, he'll take us through and understanding about, as far as Abraham and understanding how he had uh, salvation. And it says, is it, is it not of the God of the Gentiles also? And it says, yeah, understand that the Gentiles followed after gods of their own making. They made up God. They made themselves God. So, again, yes, also Gentiles, um, since God is one who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised by faith. So there's only one way for salvation to be made right is through the one who who is just and the justifier, and that's Jesus Christ, as we just had seen. And it says this, Do we not then overthrow the law by this faith? He said, by no means. See, the faith had value and and the and the fact that the law showed that we couldn't do it. It showed that we were sinners. It shows that we need um, really a savior. We can't do it. And so it says, by no means, in the strongest way, don't overthrow uh, the the law by this faith. But on the contrary, we uphold the law. And, and probably what it's meaning is, is mean that it is meant, put there to convict people of their sin. The old point of the Old Testament was to point that people needed justification by faith and faith alone. It was pointing to Christ. And so now we look back to Christ. And so a lot of us kind of shoot ourselves in the foot in the sense of that a lot of people have a hard time saying, I don't have the answers in and of myself. How many of you, maybe when you're in need or you need help with something, you'll do anything else but ask for help. Well, this is a situation that it doesn't matter if we go to our neighbors, call up an old friend, go to a teacher, whatever it may be, they cannot provide salvation for us. They, there are some such as myself and other believers, that can point people to Jesus Christ, but I can't save anybody. It is only Jesus Christ and his work on the cross that salvation can be had. Now, we can point to people to that salvation, but we, we can't force anybody to have it. I mean, again... It is a choice, a decision of belief that God enables them to do, to have in him, to, to know him, to know of his love, to know of his righteousness. But before they're even at that point of trusting in Jesus Christ, they've got to recognize that they're a sinner in need of a savior. And that's why Paul spent so much time already talking about that no one is righteous, no, not one, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That is the key that 
we have to see that we're in such a horrible position before we can see the magnificent work of Jesus Christ. And I, I hope you look at this and just go, man, oh man, look at the work that Jesus Christ has done and what he has offered. And we we can't add anything through it. And, and so all that you do is say, yes, Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for the work that you did because I don't deserve it. I can't boast in it. I can't say that here I am a Christian better than that non-Christian because look at how good I am. No, I can't at all. What I can say is thanks be to God for his mercy that he has given me through the work of Jesus Christ who provided a way to be that atonement, to be that propitiation, to be that sacrifice that satisfied the wrath of God, therefore showing God's righteousness, his holiness, how how utterly amazing God is to be able to deal with the issue of sin that is your and my problem. God provided a solution. And so this message is so important if you're an unbeliever. If you have never trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to trust in the work that Jesus Christ has done on the cross and the salvation that can be had in him. And he is the only way. No other uh, path can get you there. There is no other way of enlightenment. There is nothing else for all stand condemned. And the only way for salvation is but through faith in Jesus Christ and the work that he's done. And I want to encourage you to cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and I'll just go ahead and I'll close in prayer in just a little bit. But if you have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, understanding the work that he has done and, and that he continues to deal with your sin, that is an amazing thing. And so just as we came to know the Lord through faith, we continue to live by faith, the faith that Christ had and the obedience that Christ had and that he was he satisfied the righteous demands and so that's how we continue to live in faith and it is shown as we are so thankful for what he does the result of that is good works see good works can never get us into heaven but good works is a response to the work that Jesus Christ has done as a response of, uh, in a sense of, of gratitude, not that you can earn God's favor in any bit or way or form. You can't because he has given it and he calls us to live by faith. What great news this is. What a great passage that shows us the way of salvation through Jesus Christ. This is key. This is important. Know where this is in scripture so that you can show it to others, the importance of faith in Jesus Christ. So let's go ahead and close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the work that you have done in us and through us. Lord, we thank you for your for you being just and the justifier. Lord, we thank you that through your work on the cross that we can have salvation. Lord, I, I pray that we continue to place our faith and trust in you, for you are worthy of faith, Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for redeeming us for, from what we deserve. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. It's in your name we do pray. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to go through this passage with me. If you have any questions, reach out to me and be blessed.